Hello everybody, welcome to Dak Man Productions and welcome to Conahay Southern. Uh, this is my CSX uh, subdivision. So I built the layout with Bachman Easy Track. And the reason being is, is I just did not want to spend the time cutting and laying track on Cork. Uh, I've already built my O gauge layout with, um, you know, Flex Track and roadbed and guard graze track and hand laying and cutting it and soldering it and i just didn't want to go through that again and for the size of this um i decided to go with bachman easy track this on this build and so far it's been pretty reliable i would like to thank sterling callahan raven hulk 6910 uh check out his youtube channel he does uh He's been doing a lot of HO uh, himself. He's doing a layout build and really appreciate his help and advice on doing a lot of things. The mistakes he made, um, he lets me know them, even though there's one that I forgot about and we'll talk about that. So how did I come up with the layout design? Well, first I went out on the internet and I looked for, just typed in simply four by eight layout designs. And I was going through them and I found one that was really close to what I wanted and I modified it. Then I threw it into uh, a program called AnyRail and I highly recommend that program, AnyRail, uh, because you can actually put up, uh, you know, for, tell it the dimensions four by eight and then, you know, it has all these track options you can pick and then it knows, you know, it's pretty close to uh, being able to plan out a layout so you don't waste money buying stuff that you don't need. So AnyRail played a big role in helping me buy uh, track and switches because it's so expensive. Now, when I did go with switches, I did not go with the standard Bachman switches. I wanted the nice long uh, number six switches. They're, they're a little bit more expensive, but they were well worth it. So sometimes things look good on a computer, but, you know, when you initially put it on a layout and then you see, okay, now that I see this, maybe I want a little bit more of a, you know, track spur to go here rather than there or change it because I can get more of a siding. There's There's been a couple changes uh you know, subtle changes that I made even after everything was planned out on any rail. Now getting to the addition, there's people who said it doesn't even look like another addition would even fit in here, but the, the way the camera is positioned, it, it made the room smaller than it looked, I guess. I don't know, but as you can see, it fit in here pretty well. And and the one thing I can say about any rail, <laughs> it does not give you any warnings about, hey, your design is flawed, and we'll talk about that as well. So the original plan when I made it up on any rail, there was no warning to say, hey, dummy, this is not going to work. <laughs> you know, big flashing. Uh, you need to put, you need to change your S-curve design. So unfortunately, a full straight piece wouldn't work in there. But luckily, I had enough room to put a couple of uh, a quarter straight and a half straight in here, and I'll show you guys that. And it solved my derailment problem perfectly. All right, so right here is what I'm talking about. I originally had, I did not have any straight sections in here. So it was trying to come off from making, you know, going around this way to the left and then coming back to the right. And it, every time it came to this point, it would just literally pull the car behind it off the track. So uh, I played around with it. I put, I was going to try, you know, and put a quarter here and a quarter curve there, but that didn't work out. Um, then I decided, okay, just let me build up a straight so I put a small straight in there that wasn't enough and I put this uh half straight in there without this one that wasn't enough so the com the perfect combination was a half straight 
and a quarter straight and it solved all the derailment issues now my scale trains locomotive will uh, pull the train through without pulling it off the track now uh, once again I'm using back the track uh, easy track 22 inch curves not 18 uh, 22 is what you're going to need if you plan on running the big diesels and of course steam that's a whole different deal but i'm not going steam i'm i'm modern csx modern here all right so what are the plans well of course i'm going to get a, a backdrop in here uh so all this is it's hidden the, the one thing i'm going to do differently with the backdrop is i'm definitely going to put it on nice thin foam board so I can easily remove it and not have to bake, break my back removing it and lifting it and putting it in place. So um, that's my plan for the backdrop, just putting it on a uh, nice, thin, cheap foam, foam board. Okay, where you see this CSX bridge, that's a Bachman Easy Track bridge. I'm going to have, a, I'm going to carve out a stream. And that stream is going to run into a leak. So uh, that's going to be a cool scene. Um, then right here, I'm, I'm going to put a house right here, a house scene. Maybe a couple of them. We'll see how it goes. But over in this corner, all the way in the back is the house scene. I'm going to move that to over here because it does not make sense for that to me now that I did this. I'm going to change all that up because the house is next to a city. I don't know. I'm probably going to take that out and uh, maybe make um, a little hill in here like I did before. And like I said, I'll probably put that house in here. There's probably room for like three or four of them in here. We'll have to see. But maybe not four. Maybe like two or three. And of course I got to change. This is where the track used to run. So it used to run and make a circle. So you can see where I connected it here. I still have to realign my siding yet. Get that realigned and put back the way it should be. Uh, the one thing I'm glad I did use. I used... Elmer's clear glue, which made it really easy to remove uh, scenery without destroying everything. All right, so the plan for the rest of this layout is over in this section, I plan on having a rail yard here, and then over there will be a cement plant. I really want a cement plant. <laughs> Because uh, we had one here in the next town over, but it closed a couple year, a few years ago. But I still would like to have one. So the things that I have on my layout for industries are industries that actually existed or still existed. All right, so let's go ahead and make a train run. Because I'm sure you like to see this run. And this is a Skill Trains CSX Honor R Veterans Locomotive. So go ahead and use that since it's already set up.
Now here is our trouble spot, and as you'll see, runs through just fine now. And then it comes back into the original 4x8. Do one more pass so you can see the train come through one more time. So I wanted to recap real quick what's on this 4x8 layout. So we have a elevated uh, feed and seed uh, facility. We have the uh, Walther's, and both, that's a Walther's kit too. So, and we have a Walther's uh, grain silo facility, the ADM facility. Really loved uh, how that came out. Then we have the uh, fire station, Walther's. Walther's Post Office, the Walther's CSX Office, the uh, Walther's Refrigerated Warehouse. I ended up kit bashing that ramp that goes into that door. Then we have over here the Walther's Propane Facility. I know it's a little dark in there. I'm going to have to come up with better lighting if I'm going to continue doing videos in this room. And you can see I have uh, refrigerated rail cars back here already. And I'm using Woodland Scenics uh, HO telephone poles. The uh, road is also um i think the road is woodland scenics as well as well they make different variations you got the uh, double line single line 
Very nice. The one thing, maybe you guys can help me, but the one thing that I really want are rail crossings. And it seems like no matter who I talk to in the HO community, they basically said the same thing. Not many people even want railroad signals because they're so delicate. Now, I don't want the ones with the arms on them. I just want the ones that just simply blink. You know, maybe, you know, ones that you can put in here that blink, no arms, and even trip a photo sensor to turn them on and off. So when the train goes over the photo sensor, it's timed. So when the train gets past the photo sensor, maybe 20 seconds later, the lights turn off. That's what they, that's how they do it in O-Gage anyway. But to find railroad signals in HO is near impossible. And when I talk to the clubs, most of them don't even want them. I mean, you got the, you got the track that goes across the road. Why not have them, a railroad signal? But I have found, um, a eBay seller called uh, We Honest, something like that, We Honest, or We Be Honest, and they sell railroad signals. I've had seen videos on that, mixed reviews. Some people like them. Some people say that the centers at Triple can be very, very finicky. But why isn't there more, isn't there a manufacturer who makes these readily available? I don't know. And... I've seen Walther's Railroad Signals, but it says not for use with DCC. So I was wondering, maybe somebody could explain why. So, at any rate, that is uh, a recap of the original 4x8. And as you can see, I just, I wanted to cut this out so it's just easy. I can scoot this underneath here. And now you can see why it's, it's as high as it is. This is not built to NMRA standards by any means. But I built it high enough so I get this old piece of furniture, this dresser, underneath of this and use it for storage. And that was the whole entire reason for building it this high. And on top of that, it's actually easier for me to see it this close up and not being bent over. But at any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video update of CSX Conahay Southern Division in HL. I'll catch you guys later. Trackside. Goodbye.